Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, the structure of the atom. This topic was suggested by Youssef Bilal. If you'd like to suggest your own topic, then just leave a comment below. Now you're probably quite familiar with the overall structure of the atom because you'll have seen something like this all over the place anytime anyone's talking about anything to do with radioactivity or nuclear energy. It's the logo of the Springfield Isotopes uh, baseball team from The Simpsons, for example. It represents a modern understanding of the structure of the atom. Prior to this, people thought of atoms as just little balls with positive and negative charges in them, and they called it the plum pudding model, because the way that the charges were distributed within that ball kind of represented the way that plums were distributed in a plum pudding. Now this is a better model of an atom, where you've got a tiny dense core containing protons and neutrons, and you've also got electrons going around the outside. However, this isn't strictly speaking accurate, because if this were drawn to scale, then the nucleus of that atom, that tiny dense core to it, should be much, much tinier compared to the overall size of the atom. The nucleus takes up a tiny amount, roughly one ten thousandth to one fifteen thousandth of the volume of the entire atom. But remember, that's where all the mass is, so it's incredibly dense. Actually, strictly speaking, it's not quite all of the mass. Uh, we say the protons have a mass of one mass unit, the neutrons have a mass of one mass unit as well. The electrons have a mass of about one two thousandth of a mass unit. So they contribute barely anything at all to the overall mass, but technically they do weigh something. In addition to the masses of these subatomic particles, you also need to know the charges on each of them. So in addition to having a mass of one, a proton's got a charge of plus one. A neutron, in addition to having a mass of one, has zero charge, it's neutral, hence the name neutron. And an electron, although it has almost no mass, it has a minus one charge. Its charge is equal and opposite to that of a proton. In a normal atom, you get an equal number of electrons and protons. And so because you've got an equal number of equal and opposite charges, the overall charge on an atom is zero. The charges are balanced. If you add an extra electron or remove any electrons, then you actually unbalance that and you get an ion. That particle, that atom will be charged. In the periodic table, we represent the atoms of each of the elements with an entry like this. The two numbers there give us the information about the protons, neutrons and electrons in this atom. The small number is always the number of protons, and because the number of protons always equals the number of electrons, it's also the number of electrons. It's often referred to as the atomic number or the proton number. The larger number is the overall mass number. That's how much each individual atom weighs. And remember, its mass is made up of the protons and the neutrons, so if you subtract the small number from the large number, you'll get the number of neutrons. Remember, with protons and electrons, you just read the smaller number. With neutrons, you need to do that subtraction. Lastly, you need to be aware that the periodic table only tells you the most common isotope of each type of element. That is the most common type of atom. Atoms actually can come in a variety of different types. And this is easiest to see with hydrogen. And it's most common to look at hydrogen when we're talking about this. Normal hydrogen has a mass number of one and a proton number or atomic number of one. That means that its mass is coming from one single proton. There's nothing else in its nucleus. But hydrogen has a couple of isotopes. It's got one called deuterium, which has a symbol like this, and deuterium's mass number is two. It's still got one proton, so that extra unit of mass has come from an additional neutron. There's an even rarer isotope of hydrogen known as tritium, and that has a mass number of three. And so we get two neutrons in its nucleus in addition to the one proton. Chemically, they're still exactly the same as hydrogen. They still have one electron in their outer shell, and they react in exactly the same way. But in physical terms, those atoms are a little heavier. And often, the more rare isotopes are more rare because they're actually radioactive and will break down radioactively. And we'll consider radiation in a later video.
I hope that video was useful to you. You now need to check your learning with the snap quiz. It'll only take a minute. The link is in the description along with all the other links for this video. You can also click just here to watch all the other videos which I've made. You can click just here to download my free app to help you with your revision. Or if you click just here, then you can subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to leave comments and likes. Good luck in your GCSEs and thanks very much for watching.